Hello, welcome back. Um, it's been a little bit and I'm not going to apologize again. That's fine. Today, I have a super fast collection of things I need to talk about. So we are already in November. We're a couple days in. So I have a TBR list that I want to share. But I also want to kind of like talk about what I read in October because it was a pleasant surprise for me. So let's do that. Okay, so first for October, this is everything I read. That is a pleasant surprise. And I don't know that I'll be able to repeat that again anytime soon. How it happened, I'm still not really sure, but it happened and I'm happy that it happened because I feel like it makes up for the last couple of months of very slow and steady reading. So going through kind of quickly of what I read and what I thought about it, I read You and I read Hidden Bodies and I did not care for either of them. I just, I am, I think I am not a fan of Caroline Keem, Keems, Kemp's and I far preferred the show. I think the, the the writing the writing style is not for everyone, which I think is why I didn't like it. I don't mind when there's a lot of second person point of view. I enjoy that. And it didn't bother me that I was in the mind of a sociopath. But other than that, I was not invested in the writing. It just did not, it was not quality to me. And I felt like the show brought it to a whole nother level where like, in theory, the plot is really interesting and there's a lot of cool potential stuff to happen to it. But I just, I found that I was not invested in the writing and I got through it because I wanted to get through it, but I'm not happy that I did it. I did start Providence and I stopped because it was not the third book in the series. The third book only just recently came out. So I was confused. And I just could not continue on at that point in time with this author's particular writing style. So I stopped. Will I go back to Providence? I don't really think so. I don't know. I don't think that I will. However, it's fine. These were done. In no particular order, I read We Were Liars. This is by E. Lockhart. And I think I gave it a four, five star, five star because the ending it was a slow, slow, slow burn, but the ending was well worth it. There was so much complexity that happened. It reminded me a little bit of Monday's Not Coming and how that ending had such a twist to it, but I felt like this was far more realistic and made sense, if that makes sense. Um, it didn't feel forced to me. It felt like there was that significant trauma that really had impacted your protagonist. And I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I also read an arc from Macmillan. It is Bright Ruined Things. The date of publication has been pushed, I think, to February. So there was really no rush. I didn't know that when I started it, but it's okay. Um, I liked the idea behind it, but I felt the execution was lacking. I also have not read The Tempest. And if I did, I was in college and I don't really remember it. So I think that I'm missing the wow factor behind this. I feel like it just, again, execution wise was not my favorite. The plot felt very chaotic and very forced. I liked when it was very focused on the 1920s aspect of it. But once it started to get to the fantastical stuff, it didn't make sense to me. And I usually am very invested in fantasies, especially high fantasies and things like that. And I appreciate the complexities of it. But this was not my favorite. I think I gave it to maybe three stars. I don't even remember. I actually did successfully read a nonfiction book. And this is all about the Lizzie Borden trial and the murder of her dad and her stepmom, which as I was reading, I went back to eighth grade me. I don't, no one else seems to remember this, but in eighth grade, at least where I went to school, there was a play version or something, or there was a short story, or not a short story, but like a small book. And I very much remember reading this in eighth grade and then putting on the trial 
right? And like one of us was Lizzie and somebody else was like the lawyer and like we went through the whole thing and executed and now I cannot for the life of me find what it was because I thought it would be so cool to do with my students but I like cannot... I don't know where the material came from. Anyway, I really enjoyed this book. There was a lot of great facts and there were photos, but the photos were not super gruesome, which I appreciated. However, some of the details and descriptions from the trial were pretty gruesome. But beside the point, it was a nice revisiting of this particular murder, which is incredibly well known. And, um, I'm gonna have to keep trying to find that material to bring it into my classroom and use. I talked a little bit about this, I think in the TBR video, maybe because I was so late posting it. I loved this book. I gave it a five. It's I Killed Zoe Spanos. The twist at the end, did not see it coming. Probably should have seen it coming, did not see it coming. And that was totally okay. I love that. I don't want the twist to be ruined for me. What I really loved was how it started right in Amelia's rest where she's in the police station like giving this account that is or is not particularly true. This was a five-star read for me. I read Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron and I this is just another one that I really liked the idea behind it that there's this whole dystopian society where every year there is a ball of young women and they get matched and the execution of the story just felt incredibly predictable to me. I almost kind of got bored with it. I read it so fast because I was bored and just wanted it to get to the end at that point. I think I gave it a three stars because there was a lot of really interesting detail in here that I liked and enjoyed and wanted to see more of and then it didn't happen. So it was a little, it was a bit of a letdown for me, but it was okay. I also read How It Feels to Float by Helena Fox and this was a five star read. Biz and her head and her emotions behind all this tragedy and trauma that she has faced it was fascinating to be inside someone else's head of their grief and how they process and handle their grief. It was really beautifully written. It was super fast. It wasn't quite in verse. It, it was prose, but it the way the prose was written felt like verse and it was just stunning. The imagery was gorgeous and I really enjoyed it. It lived up very fully to its hype that I had heard about. And it was just, oh, it like gives me chills thinking about it because being in somebody's brain of how they handle grief in that kind of way, oh, it, it was hard at points to read it. But I think that that's why it's so necessary because everybody processes their grief in different ways. I also read Cemetery Boys by Eden Thomas and I enjoyed this. It was so much fun to read something that was Dia de los Muertos focused. And I think that I gave it four stars just because the ending kind of, not that it was a cop out, it was a surprise, the twist, but then it just felt like the perfect ending that maybe necessarily shouldn't have happened. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel totally about the ending of it. I almost wish that it hadn't ended in that way, but I think this is the first of multiple books, so it makes sense why it did end the way that it did, and I will accept that. That's fine. Okay, last. I'm not even going to talk about the audiobooks that I read right now because there were a bunch of them too, and they were mostly good. They were all very spooky kind of focused, but I did also read this other arc from Macmillan and it was interesting. It was the first book I finished of the month and it's almost like these short stories that lead up to a novella and they have a different focus of each um, character and the different issues that they're facing and a lot of it has to deal with racism that is woven throughout all of the stories and systemic oppression. I liked all of the shorter stories. The novella was hard for me to get into. I don't know how else to explain it. Once I was in it and we were moving and there was more action, it felt far more interesting to read. But there, there was a lot of rushed setup to it, I felt like, and that maybe I just was trying to read it so fast and missed some information. I'm not really sure what it was. But... It, it was okay. I think I gave it a three stars because I enjoyed some of the stories, but I did not enjoy all of them. That was super fast. I probably should have taken like some better notes on 
what I read and why I enjoyed them and stuff. I am not the greatest at that and I need to practice it, but I am pleasantly surprised at how many books I accomplished in November. So well, let's talk about November though next. I started Dread Nation at the end of October thinking I could probably finish this by the end of October and then I didn't read for two days so that didn't happen. This is by Justina Ireland and it is about the Civil War has happened and at the Battle of Gettysburg all of a sudden dead soldiers start rising from the dead and they become zombies and it is several years after that battle where the North and South are no longer fighting each other but they are fighting the undead and there are like combat schools for Black and Native American children who are taken away from their families and they are trained to be these fighters because why not? We don't care about them so they can go to the front and they can fight for us and keep us safe. I did just finish it. I think I'm going to give it four out of five stars, but I will save this more in depth for the end of November to review a little bit better. Something else that I am reading that actually came out yesterday, I'm a little behind, is You've Reached Sam by Dustin Theo. It is a debut novel. This was sent to me from Macmillan as an arc. So I am trying to read it very quickly so that way I can have a review to publish now that it has been published. So far I am very invested in this. I just started it today and I have already read that much. But what happens is Sam dies, you find out pretty quickly at the beginning. He and our protagonist, um, Julie, sorry for, for a second, Sam and Julie have been dating and he dies. And you know this, you don't know how he has died yet though, but she calls his, she's like getting rid of all of his stuff, she deletes his number, and then all of a sudden just is lost in the woods and has this sudden urge to call him. So she calls him and he picks up and you're like, what is happening? Is he really alive? He's not, he knows that he's dead. It like comes up in part of their conversation, but they're having these conversations back and forth. And so I feel like this is gonna be kind of like how it feels to float where the character Julie is handling her grief and processing through it. But there's also this really interesting aspect where Sam is still communicating with her via phone and like leaving things for her. But that's all I've really gotten to so far. So, so far it has been really good and it's a very fast read. I'm just not that far into it. Okay, and then for the rest of the month, I very much decided that I wanted to kind of go with Indigenous authors and characters as a focus since it is Indigenous Heritage Month. I don't know really anything about any of these books, but all of them came from my classroom library. They were part of the Book Love Foundation grant that I received in last month. I received them last month, two months ago. Um, but they are all focused on Indigenous voices, which was something that I wanted to add a little bit more into my classroom, which is why I was able to select all of these books from those shelves. The best part about it is that I can read them and very quickly bring them back in to share with students throughout the month to kind of pique their interest in more Indigenous voices that we have available in our room. So besides not knowing anything about them, let's find out together. The first book that I'm going to share with you is Peacemaker. This is by Joseph Brukhock, who has numerous books published about indigenous, indigenous characters and their voices and especially young adult literature. Um, this book, the reason that I found this one and picked it is because it's specifically about the five nations of Iroquois. So I actually purchased this one a few months ago and it's been on my shelf. Um, but I thought that it was really interesting because where we, where I grew up actually is very much an Iroquois nation. And that was like what we learned as part of our New York state history in our classes. Um, I mean, when I was in fourth grade, we made a longhouse replica. We, we focused, like when I was in middle school, our houses were separated by different tribe names and such. So for me, this is a connection to the area that I grew up in. And in this story, there is a 12 year old, Okwako, who he is out hunting with his best friend and they are kidnapped by men from a neighboring tribal nation and he barely escapes. Um, there's raids, there's killings, they, the five nations have been at war for so long and no one remembers what it's like to live in peace. So Okwako is 
very angry about the whole situation that has happened. Obviously, anybody would be angry about being kidnapped. There is a visitor in the woods who is named the Peacemaker, and he comes to share these lessons, these tales, these messages with him to help promote the peace between the tribes rather than causing more strife and more war. So the question at the end of it is, can all five tribes come together to form the Iroquois Great League of Peace? It is a very short book. It's something that I will be able to get through very quickly. It sounds like it is a middle level read. Um, and it is just something that I think is so important to add and have these voices represented in our classrooms. So that is the first book. Now the rest of them are all ones that I got from the grant. So First is Hearts Unbroken by Cynthia Lechett Smith. This story is about a girl who dumped her first boyfriend because he is mocking Native Americans. And she obviously has some deep connection to it and she's not going to tolerate it. And she just says goodbye to him. So now the editors of the school newspaper have paired her with Joey, who is a new photo and video staffer. Um, and they find themselves covering the story of the year where the school's musical's director faces parental backlash over the inclusive approach to casting for The Wizard of Oz. There's threats, there's bullying, there's, you know, we've seen this quite a bit in the news recently of trying, of schools, teachers, folks trying to be more inclusive, whether it's with books that are being published or having a better inclusive representation on stage. And there's been some backlash and it all comes down to politics. So this seems incredibly irrelevant and I do not think that this is something that will stay on my shelf very long once it makes its way there. I have another Joseph Brukoff book because he has just published so many. This one is actually a science fiction book. It is called Killer of Enemies and there is no summary. All it says is this is not a once upon a time story but from what I've understood from the synopsis when I put it into my classroom library it is almost like a virtual reality kind of situation and that's pretty much all I know. It's like a female protagonist, something about being in VR and that's it. That's it. That's all I know and that's a really terrible summary and I'm so sorry. I'm kind of disappointed there isn't a better summary but I think that's also better because then I don't really know what I'm getting myself into. The only reason I definitely know it's science fiction is because I had to look up the synopsis at one point and uh, that's it. I should have gone back to it but that's fine. I'm really intrigued by the cover. So the cover is just so it's so badass. A female protagonist that's just like guns a-blazing? Hell yeah, let's go. I have heard nothing but wonderful stuff about the Mero Thieves. And this is by Sherry DeMillene. And it is about a world that has been pretty much destroyed by global warming. So the indigenous people are being hunted for their bone marrow because they're the only ones who now have the ability to dream. And there is this like missing factor of how dreaming is so important. And so they're literally being tracked and hunted down for specifically their bone marrow to ensure that everyone else in the population is able to have the ability to dream. It sounds like there is a group of friends who they're just trying to survive and one of them actually holds the secret to defeating the marrow thieves. That's it. That's all I know. So I, but I have seen lovely things about this book. So many wonderful reviews. I like, I haven't read what the reviews actually said, but just knowing that there is a lot of good vibes behind this book and that of how interesting it is, it's appealing to me. And I always love a good dystopian setting. And I love a good friend group in stories that are just like trying to survive. For a fantasy book, I picked out a lot. So this is by Darcy Little Badger. I love that it has the illustrations throughout at the tops of the chapters because they're just stunning. I have seen this one around quite a bit too. And I have been highly interested in reading it. I finally got my hands on a copy of it. So now I have it and it's here and I can read it. I know nothing about it except that I have also seen lovely things about it and that the cover is stunning and that's pretty much all I know. We are imagining an America that is very similar to our own 
but there are some differences. The America in this book has been shaped by magic and monsters, knowledge, and legends of its people, those indigenous and those not. Alasso, though, lives in a slightly stranger America where she has the ability to raise the ghosts of dead animals, which is a skill passed down through her Apache family. Her cousin has been murdered. There are some gruesome secrets. She's going to have to rely on wits, skills, and friends to tear off the mask of what has happened and figure out and solve this murder mystery of her cousin. Last, but certainly not least, I chose The Firekeeper's Daughter is a mystery read. This is by Angeline Bully. This is another one I've just seen multiple things floating around. I do know someone, I don't remember who, but I remember seeing a review somewhere where someone thought that because it was Indigenous Voices, there was going to be more of that fantastical, magical, realism kind of aspect to it. And it wasn't. And not that they were disappointed, but that they realized themselves they were assuming something about this type of literature that there was going to be that included and and that's not necessarily true and so just being more mindful about reading indigenous voices that there doesn't have to be that kind of spiritual magical connection to it it can just be indigenous voices so again a uh, just a summary i know nothing about but this is about 18 year old donis who Feels like she's never fit in either on her hometown or on the reservation. She wants to start fresh at college and then a tragedy strikes. So she needs to put her, her whole future on hold while looking after her mom. The only bright spot is meeting Jamie, who is a charming new recruit for her brother Levi's hockey team. Oh, and then she witnesses a murder and it thrusts her into an FBI investigation of a lethal new drug. Okay. She reluctantly agrees to go undercover because she has a lot of knowledge of chemistry and traditional medicine to track down the source. Could you, could you go itch somewhere else? Go itch somewhere. Oh yeah, sure. Go bark. That works too. Oh, the battery's going to die. That's fantastic. We're almost done. Um, at the same time, she's more concerned in this investigation. It seems to be punishing the offenders than protecting the victims. So there's some deception. There's deaths. She needs to figure out how far she will go to protect her community and her own Native experiences while also recognizing historical injustices. It is a bigger book. I'm going to try to fit this in in the middle of the month so that way I have enough time to make sure that I cover this one as well. That was a lot in a very little amount of time. I think little. I'm trying to condense things to keep them short and sweet and I'm also doing a terrible job of prepping things. I need to be a little better at that. We will work on that. That will be a goal for next TBR video so that I have a better idea of what the hell I'm reading in the month. I just kind of pick by author and genre at this point or topic and that's there's really not a lot of planning that's gone into it. So we'll see. Maybe next month I'll get it together a little bit and have a little bit more organized of a video. But please don't count on it. Anyway, thank you so much for sticking around and watching me vlog about very quick books. Hey! Why are you so loud? Really? Anyway, I think that is my signal to go. Thank you for sticking around and watching me talk about very fast book reviews that probably are not really helpful for you and uh, book summaries that I don't know what I'm talking about. And um, Ziggy is ready to play. So we're going to go. Yeah, are you ready? So I am going to go and I will see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.